Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about gamma distribution. Now, gamma and exponential distribution. Well, exponential is just a special case for gamma distribution. It's same like when the geometric distribution was the special case for the negative binomial distribution. Okay, so now for this you should know the concept of gamma function. So here I am only going to define what is the gamma function because I have given a detailed lecture on gamma function. So the link is there in the description. So if you don't have the idea about the gamma function or the properties of gamma function, do look into that video. Okay, so gamma for any alpha, where alpha can be any real number except the negative, uh, except 0, minus 1, minus 2 and all. Okay, so it can be any real number except 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. It is defined as this an improper integral of type 1 integral 0 to infinity t raised to this alpha minus 1 e raised to minus t dt t is the variable now if you have a function which is defined like this for x negative it is 0 for x positive it is 1 upon beta raised to alpha gamma alpha x raised to alpha minus 1 e raised to minus x by beta if you have such a function then it's a pdf first thing is a pdf then we say that x follows gamma distribution. Now one can one also write this as f x comma alpha comma beta because alpha and beta are the two parameters in this function. So this is another way to represent and actually this is a good way to represent and not this one. Where alpha and beta are some constants which will be given to you. So if you have a PDF like this then we say x follows gamma distribution. Now first thing is this a PDF? So for a function to be a PDF, two conditions should be satisfied. It should be non-negative. Is this non-negative? Yes, because this is non-negative. This is non-negative. My alpha, beta are greater than zero. Okay, I should have mentioned that my alpha and beta both are greater than zero. So this is positive. This is positive. Anything raised to power function is always positive. Exponential function is always positive. So everything is positive and this is zero. So my F, this function is a non-negative function. Second thing is the integration one. That means is the integration of this function 1. So let us try to see. So integration minus infinity to infinity f of x comma alpha comma beta dx is this equal to 1. So let's try to solve. So we split this as minus infinity to 0 plus 0 to infinity. But minus infinity to 0 my function is 0 because for x less than 0 my function is 0. So this is same as integral 0 to infinity of the function 1 upon beta raised to alpha gamma of alpha x raised to alpha minus 1 e raised to minus x by beta dx because minus infinity to 0 it is 0. Now this is constant so these things will come outside and see I want to bring gamma into the picture so I want to use this definition somehow. So to use this definition I have e raised to minus t and here I am having e raised to minus x by beta. So what you do is you substitute your x by beta equal to t so that here you will get e raised to minus t then you can think of using this definition okay now what is this this implies your dx is nothing but beta times dt and when you do this transformation so i think i don't need this part so let me erase this so what do i get so this is when x is 0 my t is also 0 when x is infinity my t is also infinity so the limits for t are also same 0 to infinity 1 upon beta raised to alpha gamma alpha what is my x x is t into beta so i have t into beta raised to alpha minus 1 i have e raised to minus t and what is my dx it is beta into dt okay so this is what we get now here if you observe now the answer comes in two lines okay so what do you get so this is beta raised to alpha minus 1 into beta so this is nothing but beta raised to alpha so beta raised to alpha minus 1 into beta is beta raised to alpha gets cancelled here 1 upon gamma alpha i am taking it outside 0 to infinity t raised to alpha minus 1 e raised to minus t dt but what is this gamma of alpha so this is nothing but gamma of alpha so this and this gets cancelled and therefore the answer is one therefore the function that we defined is a pdf okay so whenever you have a x for which that f of x alpha beta is a pdf then we say that x follows gamma distribution okay so that's one thing now once you have a distribution the main information we need is 
what is the mean and the variance for the distribution okay so what is the expected value of x where x follows the gamma distribution so it is minus infinity to infinity x into f of x this is the formula that we have seen in earlier lectures but again my function is zero from minus infinity to zero for x negative so this is same as zero to infinity x one upon for x positive what is our function this is our function x raised to alpha minus one e raised to minus x by beta dx now do the same substitution put x by beta equal to t so the limits of t are same zero to infinity this thing is a constant so it remains as it is this is what x raised to alpha minus one x raised to one so this thing is x raised to alpha but what is my x it is beta t so beta t raised to alpha e raised to minus t into what will be dx beta dt so what do i get see so beta raised to alpha beta raised to alpha goes away this beta will come outside beta upon gamma raised to alpha come outside zero to infinity t raised to alpha into e raised to minus t dt but for gamma of alpha is what gamma of alpha is t raised to alpha minus one now here i am having only alpha so what should be the input your input should be alpha plus one so that this will be zero to infinity t raised to input minus one input minus one will be alpha so this is beta upon gamma alpha into gamma of alpha plus one but if you see the properties of gamma function you can see the link in the description gamma of alpha plus one is alpha into gamma alpha okay so this is nothing but alpha into gamma alpha now gamma alpha gamma alpha goes away therefore the mean of a gamma distribution is nothing but alpha into beta so mean is nothing but alpha beta now let us try to find the variance now how do you find variance so variance of x is nothing but e raised to x square minus e of x the whole square what is the definition minus infinity to infinity x square into function and this we found it was alpha beta now again what is the function for minus infinity to zero it is zero and from zero to infinity it is this function so i'm not writing minus infinity to zero this is alpha square beta square now this is a number it will come outside x square x raised to alpha minus one is x raised to alpha plus one remaining as it is now what you do the same substitution put x by beta equal to t so this will be e raised to minus t where dx was what beta dt and x is beta t so this is what you get the limits of t are same zero to infinity now here you can observe here you have beta raised to alpha plus one and here one so beta raised to alpha plus two and beta raised to alpha goes away beta square will remain okay what will remain is the beta square so this is nothing but beta square upon gamma of alpha integration zero to infinity this is nothing but t raised to alpha plus one e raised to minus t dt minus alpha square beta square but what was the function gamma of alpha is what the same thing t raised to alpha minus one so what should be the input so you get alpha plus one your input should be alpha plus two so that t raised to alpha plus two minus one which will be alpha plus one so when your input is alpha plus two here you will get alpha plus one okay so this thing is nothing but beta square gamma of alpha into gamma of alpha plus two minus alpha square into beta square but again by the property of gamma function what is gamma of alpha plus two it is nothing but alpha plus one into gamma of alpha plus one see the link in the description okay i have talked there so alpha plus one what is gamma of alpha plus one it is alpha into gamma alpha so when i put this value over here my gamma alpha gamma alpha will get cut away i'll be left with beta square into alpha into alpha plus one minus alpha square beta square now you take out beta square common you have alpha square plus alpha minus alpha square and therefore the variance for the gamma distribution is alpha into beta square so mean is alpha beta variance is alpha into beta square so yeah so that's the proof i hope this part is clear now what is the exponential distribution see when you take alpha to be one your answer will be in terms of e and therefore it is called as an exponential distribution so when your alpha will be one what will be the function f of 
x comma 1 comma beta it is what 1 upon beta raised to alpha into gamma of 1 gamma of 1 is always 1 so you have only 1 upon beta x raised to alpha minus 1 alpha is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 x raised to 0 is 1 e raised to minus x by beta 0 when x is positive when x is negative or less equal 0 so here you can see when your alpha is 1 the function is 1 upon beta into e raised to minus x by beta and here there is no gamma involved only exponential is there therefore this distribution is called as an exponential distribution okay and again what would be the mean for this the alpha is 1 so mean was alpha beta so here it will be 1 into beta which is beta and what will be the variance it was alpha into beta square but alpha is 1 so only beta square so beta and beta square are the mean and the variance for the gamma uh, for the exponential distribution so that's the thing so it involves gamma function and once you know the gamma function and its nice properties one has defined a pdf involving gamma function and when you have a random variable x for with that pdf f of x comma alpha comma beta then it's a gamma distribution and when your alpha is one it is called as an exponential distribution now let's start with an easy problem so here x is following the gamma distribution so alpha is 2 and beta is 1 you want to find this probability now x is positive so we know what is the probability probability is nothing but the integration 1.8 to 2.4 what is the formula 1 upon beta raised to alpha 1 raised to 2 into gamma of alpha x raised to alpha minus 1 into e raised to minus x by beta so this is the formula and 1 square is 1 gamma of 2 is again 1 so as i said you can see the earlier lecture things will be clear so and 2 minus 1 is 1 so this is nothing but ultimately integration of x into e raised to minus x and now we use integration by parts integration of u into v is what u into integration of v you apply the limit 1.8 to 2.4 minus integration of derivative of this is 1 integration is minus again integration you have plus e raised to minus x 1.8 to 2.4 so the first homework for you is tell me what is the answer for this question and now once you have a gamma distribution one can usually ask what is the mean and the stand, uh, mean and the standard deviation or the variance so you know alpha you know beta you have you know the formula we derived so one can easily tell what is your mean and what is the variance and hence what is the standard deviation so here is another question so suppose that the time in hours required to repair a heat pump is a random variable x having gamma distribution with alpha is 2 and beta is half what is the probability that at most one hour will be required to repair the heat pump so x is less equal 1 so this is integration 0 to 1 because we know that for x negative the function is 0 gamma distribution the pdf for the gamma distribution is 0 so you take 0 to infinity so but it is less equal 1 so only 0 to 1 1 upon beta raised to alpha into gamma of alpha gamma of 2 is 1 this is 1 by 4 so 4 will come in the numerator x raised to alpha minus 1 2 minus 1 e raised to minus x by beta so you can observe this this is nothing but 4 times 0 to 1 x e raised to minus 2x dx now here again you apply integration by parts and you will get the answer so tell me what is the answer for the a part what is the next thing probability that x is greater or equal to so integration 2 to infinity okay 2 to infinity or you can also do 1 minus probability x is less than 2 so 1 minus for x less than 2 you will go from 0 to 2 whichever you are comfortable with and integration same thing here again 4 will come and then x e raised to minus 2x dx so either you integrate 2 to infinity or you integrate 0 to 2 and do 1 minus from it okay so there's the homework for you tell me what are the answers for both the parts a and b so i hope the idea is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you